Hi, I'm Mason Vale from Boise State University. In this video, we'll look at basic concepts and algorithms for searching and sorting arrays and linear data structures like lists. Searching is the process of locating a target element in a collection or determining that it's not present by comparing the target to candidate elements in the collection. Comparisons for equivalence are typically made using the equals method, the compare to method for objects that implement comparable, or an external comparator. Regardless of the method used, we always want to perform the fewest possible number of comparisons to find the object for efficiency. When we can't make any assumptions about the relative ordering of elements in a collection, the only reliable approach to searching is to compare every candidate element to the target in order, one at a time, until we either find a matching element or run out of candidate elements to look at. On average, we can expect to have to compare half the elements in the collection before we find the one we're looking for, assuming we're generally searching for elements known to be in the collection. The order of linear search, then, is big O n linear. The advantage of this type of search is that it's guaranteed to work regardless of the ordering of elements. The downside is the linear order. If we know the elements in the collection are already in sorted order, we can do much better than linear order. In a binary search of sorted elements, we can eliminate half of all remaining candidate elements with every comparison, such that the algorithm's order is big O log n. With logarithmic order, we would have to double the number of elements in the collection to add a single comparison to the maximum number of comparisons to either find a target element or determine that it isn't in the collection. Binary search begins by examining the middle element of the range. If the target element is greater than the middle element, as in this example, we know that the target can only be found to the right of the first candidate element. We never have to look to the left of the first candidate element. The search then is repeated, often recursively, on the range of elements to the right. After each comparison, the candidate range is narrowed by half until the target is found or the range is reduced to zero. The advantage of binary search, of course, is that it's extremely fast, but it only works on an already sorted collection. Sorting is the process of arranging elements in a collection according to some specific ordering criteria. Like searches, sorts typically compare elements using either the compareTo method of comparable objects or the compare method of a standalone comparator. Most general purpose sorting algorithms for linear data structures fall into one of two categories. Sequential sorts, or quadratic sorts, are characterized by comparing all elements to all other elements in a nested loop, resulting in big O n squared runtime. They're simple to understand and they have very low overhead, so they may be appropriate for sorting small data sets, but they don't scale well. Logarithmic sorts, or more accurately, log-linear sorts, are characterized by recursive divide and conquer strategies that greatly reduce the total number of comparisons needed to sort, resulting in big O n log n runtimes. They have greater overhead than sequential sorts, but as the input size increases, their inherent efficiency more than makes up for that initial overhead. There are many sorting algorithms of both types. We're going to look at three of the best known sequential sorting algorithms and two of the best known logarithmic sorting algorithms for linear data structures. The first sequential sort we'll look at is selection sort. It walks through each position and finds the smallest value from the unsorted region using a linear search to place in the next position. This search is repeated until all positions have been filled. The example code here, like all of our examples, is sorting an array, but the algorithm concepts can be adapted for sorting collections like lists. You can see the characteristic nested loop of a sequential sort here. The outer loop walks through each index position in which a value will be placed. The inner loop performs the linear search through the unsorted region to find the location of the smallest element. Once all candidate elements have been examined, the smallest element is placed in the position being filled with a swap operation. Because the number of inner and outer loop iterations is completely unaffected by the original ordering of elements, there's very little difference between the growth functions of the best case and worst case for a selection sort. The only difference between best case and worst case is how often the index of the minimal value is updated inside the inner loop. 
in an already sorted array, the condition would never be true, so the index would never be updated. In a reverse sorted array, the condition would always be true, and the index would always be updated. In any case, the order is always big O n squared. Our second sequential sort, insertion sort, leverages knowledge of a growing sorted range of values to reduce the number of necessary comparisons. Insertion sort begins by recognizing that the first element of the collection is already a small sorted list. Rather than search the unsorted range for an element, the next unsorted element is backed up through the already sorted range until its appropriate insertion point is found. The closer the original elements were to being in sorted order already, the fewer comparisons will need to be made before finding the appropriate insertion point for each unsorted element. We still see in this code the characteristic nested loop structure of a sequential sort. The outer loop moves through unsorted elements that need to be inserted. The inner loop backs up through the sorted range to find the appropriate insertion point. Unlike selection sort, insertion sort has dramatically different best case and worst case performance. Because it's leveraging that growing sorted region as the algorithm progresses, the total number of comparisons are greatly reduced. In the best case scenario of an already sorted or nearly sorted array, the condition check of the inner loop will almost always fail, resulting in big O n runtime for the algorithm. In essence, the algorithm is simply confirming that the collection is already in sorted order. For the worst case, when all of the elements are in reverse order, every element must still be backed up all the way through to the beginning, and the maximum number of comparisons and shifts still occurs. So the worst case and average case of insertion sort is still big O n squared. However, due to its best case efficiency, its phenomenally efficient best case performance, and best in class average performance, insertion sort is often used for sorting relatively small collections and can be used to help maintain even a larger collection in sorted order. Our last sequential sort example, bubble sort, is a classic example of naive inefficiency. Bubble sort makes pairwise comparisons as it moves through the unsorted range and swaps any consecutive values that are found to be out of order. At the end of a pass through the unsorted range, the largest value has bubbled up to the top of the range. Bubble sort maximizes the total number of comparisons and swaps while continually making progress toward a sorted list. The code for bubble sort is arguably the simplest and easiest to understand of the sequential sorts we've seen, but it results in the most work. The outer loop is moving through positions to be filled, working from back to front. The inner loop then performs the pairwise comparisons and swaps, moving from the beginning of the range up to the position to be filled. The total number of comparisons that bubble sort makes is the same as that of selection sort. It's totally unaffected by the original ordering of array elements. In the best case scenario of an already sorted array, bubble sort doesn't have to make any swaps, but it can't avoid all of the pairwise comparisons, so it results in a big O n squared quadratic runtime. The best case growth function for bubble sort is very similar to selection sort. In the worst case scenario, where all of the elements are in reverse order, not only do we maximize the number of comparisons, but we also maximize the number of swaps. In the first pass through the outer loop, n minus 1 comparisons are made and n minus 1 swaps take place, and the end result of all that work is only that the largest element has been bubbled up to the top of the array. So runtime remains big O n squared for both best and worst case scenarios, but the performance of bubble sort under any circumstance is noticeably slower than the other quadratic sorts. The big idea of logarithmic sorts and their divide and conquer strategies is to recognize that smaller lists are easier to sort than longer lists. So instead of comparing all elements to all other elements, logarithmic sorts repeatedly divide the original collection into smaller ranges and compare elements only within the smaller ranges. Quick sort is the most commonly used algorithm for general purpose sorting of large collections, especially arrays. A single element is chosen from the range of unsorted elements to serve as a pivot or partition element. All remaining elements are compared to the pivot element. Smaller elements are placed in a left partition and other elements are placed in the right partition. The pivot element then is in its correct relative final position between the left and right partitions. 
This algorithm is then repeated recursively on the left and right partitions. The critical factor for quicksort to perform as intended is that the number of elements in the left and right partitions needs to be as close to equal as possible. When this is achieved, quicksort has big O n log n runtime, log linear runtime. When partitions are consistently lopsided, however, quicksort has a dirty little secret. It actually has a big O n squared worst case runtime. Production implementations of quicksort, therefore, go out of their way to carefully select pivot elements randomly or by some other means to reduce the possibility of consistently making the worst possible choice of pivot. With well-chosen pivots, quicksort tends to have the best performance of general, general purpose sorting algorithms, especially for in-place sorting of arrays. Our second logarithmic sort, merge sort, guarantees even subdivisions and provably minimizes the total number of comparisons. It works by dividing elements evenly into a left and right side and recursively merge sorts each half. When each half has been sorted, the halves are merged back into the original collection by comparing the first or smallest element from each half. The smaller of those two elements is added back into the original collection. This merging then continues until both sides are emptied. Merge sort is interesting because while it provably minimizes the total number of comparisons, its memory overhead often causes it to lag slightly behind quicksort in real-world applications, especially when sorting arrays. Even so, merge sort has a property that quicksort doesn't have. It is a stable sort, which means it maintains the relative ordering of equivalent objects from the unsorted collection in the sorted collection. When this property is needed, merge sort is usually the algorithm of choice. It also tends to close the gap or even outperform quicksort when sorting lists, especially as they become very large. This plot shows data collected from averaging the sorting times for each of the algorithms we've discussed on multiple runs of randomly generated arrays of different sizes. In addition to quicksort and merge sort, a couple of additional log linear algorithms are included, as well as the arrays.sort method from the Java standard library, which primarily uses a quicksort internally. The three versions of quicksort here differ by their choice of pivots. What should be clear is that all of the logarithmic sorts have such similar performance that their plots are indistinguishable at this scale. While insertion sort is clearly the best of the three sequential sorts and bubble sort is clearly the worst, all three sequential sorts were incapable of being reasonably tested on arrays beyond a certain point, demonstrating the importance of the order of the sorting algorithm as datasets become large.